Amla ma'am, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, thank you for inviting me to the Annapurna College of Film and Media. Uh, you know, the intent of this conversation is to talk about uh, the film education and its relevance uh, in the ever-changing entertainment uh, scenario. A lot has changed, isn't it, since we spoke last time? Yes, and welcome to the college. Thank you. Um, I must appreciate. Congratulations on your YouTube channel. Thank you. Uh, I know a lot of students are very keenly watching and listening to the conversations you're having with filmmakers. So yes, a lot has changed. That's heartening <laughs> and an added responsibility <laughs> as well. <laughs> you know, I'd like to start off by asking you about some of your recent projects. You know, when you acted in Karva and then Oke okay, Oke okay, Jeevitam, which was Kanam in Tamil and uh, the web series High Priestess. These were acting assignments that you took on after you took up the responsibility as director of the film school, isn't it? So how different was the experience of being on the sets and observing people around you at work during this phase as opposed to earlier when you were only an actor? Great question. Um, the reason I took it after becoming director so the intention was first of all to have a first hand experience of the changes that are happening on the ground uh, with the crews, with the equipment, the way they make films. I wanted to be sure that I'm in the moment and I wasn't drawing out of uh, 20 years ago, memories from 20 years ago. And all three, I mean, they're different genres. One was a theatrical release, one was an OTT release, one was a web series. So it gave me a very um, good understanding of the different approach to the newer um, opportunities available, which my students will be going to after they graduate. All of them were small budget. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't um, experimenting with uh, big budget opportunities. These were small budget opportunities. And mostly uh, why I pick small budget is I know our graduates, when you're fresh out of film school, the best opportunity you're going to get if you want to work independently or you want to work on something um, very new uh, in its uh, form and its um, storytelling. Um, if you want to do something really different, you have to work within a budget that's safe, right? Mm -hmm. So um, all the filmmakers I had worked with were also newcomers. They were people who'd been maybe around. My directors had been around in either theater or ad in the ad world for a, a long time making their livelihood and had written several stories, but this was the first story that was coming really into the into the cinemas. Yeah. Shri Kartik for Oke Oke yes. Jeevitam. Shri yeah. Kartik for Oke Oke Jeevitam, um, Pushpa for uh, the web series High Priestess, High Priestess and um, Akash Khurana for uh, um, Karvan. Yeah, so it was nice if there were small crews, they were very quick and efficient, there were bound scripts. That's mm -hmm. that's what uh, I, I loved about it because in film school that's what we teach, that you must have many, 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 many drafts that has been looked at and discussed with your mentors till the time that you're you know absolutely sure that script is screen worthy and only then go to the screen. And I think that's uh, what was common in all three and which is what we teach at the film school. They were um, very, very hard working. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I observed. You cannot um, direct or make cinema unless you are efficient at it. Okay. You know, if you want to make it within a budget, unless you're very efficient at it, you waste a lot of money, a lot of time, um, and then uh, you second guess yourself all the time. So uh, from all three projects, I noticed that they were uh, very sure and they were very comfortable with their craft and they had picked people from across um, to work in their crew who were very comfortable and efficient in their craft. Um, it was just nice to be in that space again so I could bring the first-hand knowledge back to the film school. That's interesting what you say about mm -hmm. the directors as such. You know, there are no, there is no right or wrong approach. There are still people who believe that when it comes to technical departments, say cinematography, sound design, sound recording or visual effects, animation, one needs formal training. 
बट स्क्रीन राइटिंग और डायरेक्शन इज समथिंग विच इज़ इंट्यूटिव एंड यू कैन पिक अप ऑन द वे और यू कैन लुक अप एट ऑनलाइन रिसोर्सेज एंड देन देर आर पीपल हु बिलीव दैट नो फॉर्मल ट्रेनिंग विल हेल्प मी हाउ डू यू लुक एट दिस सिचुएशन दैट्स एन इंटरेस्टिंग टेक सो संगीता यू आर फ्रॉम जर्नलिज्म एंड हैड यू हैड यू नॉट गॉन थ्रू ऑल द ट्रेनिंग ऑफ अ जर्नलिस्ट अबाउट रिसर्चिंग अ सब्जेक्ट अबाउट um discussing it with your editor or you know working mm-hmm. on several drafts of it and maybe being mentored with a senior uh, person in your office um it may have been very challenging for you to do it all on your own yeah right absolutely uh so i believe the uh, and i've worked with writers from across um industries and from different generations of writers um it's the writer's mind that produces the story hmm. right and so if the mind is well developed well exposed if it has had a a a, a really a, a good training in not just process but also how to build something that will uh, that will make a difference that people can relate to that will have the depth uh, to go a long way mm-hmm. uh and not just be a a shallow story that is just a a bunch of ideas that you you came up with because you saw other movies yeah you know yeah. so that kind of writing it always helps to have a good education a good exposure good mentoring you know uh i think also going forward it's not just one writer sitting in isolation coming up with the masterpiece mm-hmm. Uh, more and more there are writers groups right and all the films that we spoke about earlier um were groups of writers and the f- the the story is discussed from different different angles in fact there are writers groups now who bring in representation for the dialogue writing mm-hmm. uh y- there are special groups writing dialogues as well I see. So it's not just one person because sometimes if you see um a certain uh genre film there'll be everybody is speaking the same way. Then you know it's one writer. Okay. But when every character has a writer like say if uh you have a woman character in your film mm-hmm. um and it's a mature woman then uh, you have a woman writer write the dialogues. the dialogues will just flow so much i see more honestly okay and will be more uh, acceptable to a woman audience mm-hmm. because see as a woman you know who's yeah who's the mouthpiece right, right. yeah you know who's um, pulling the strings when you know what what's being said anyway so there are many different levels of um writing and uh, if a young 17 18 year old goes directly into the industry without the training the way too young to understand how to fit in and even if they're a genius at writing mm-hmm. it's still the the human mind needs time to grow and develop and build that skill you know during the pandemic is when we saw the industry going through a lot of cha- changes at a very short time uh, soon after the first lockdown i remember uh, you know a friend of mine told me that in hyderabad every studio is busy every technician is in demand every equipment is in demand because uh, people have realized that there's so much need for content both in in terms of theatrical releases as well as for digital platforms uh, as an insider what did you observe around you at that time well it was devastating that the theaters were shut down for so long but there were much bigger catastrophes happening on the planet there were bigger issues for humanity to face hmm. so um the theater issue was a small one yeah but when it reopened everybody began to respect the time they had uh to make mm-hmm. content we'll also step back in the last 10 years sangeeta the ott platforms have been slowly set up and making their way into investing uh and building their platforms and building their markets so all that was already happening um it had it was a prequel to what was the pandemic okay. yeah okay. so once it opened up then uh, everybody decided to get into action 
I think all of us became far more grateful for the opportunities and the skills that we had. And everyone wanted to put it to good use. Mm -hmm. uh, people also learned mm, how to finish shoots in smaller budgets. Mm -hmm. And with smaller crews. In smaller given the crews. Isolation exactly. That was yeah. Exactly. Smaller crews, smaller budgets. From an insider perspective, I think the... Um, I do know that it was a wake-up call for everyone mm -hmm. who wanted to, who who loved their work, and everybody wanted to make better cinema in smaller budgets, finish their projects. I think a lot of projects just got delayed, and budgets went out of hand because of the delays during the pandemic, because of all the lockdowns and yeah. all the cancellations that happened. It was a very shaky time for the industry. Um, uh, unpredictable, unpredictability, but then it was the same for industries across the world. I mean, there were industries that shut down, there were whole waves of um, uh, things that closed. But uh, I think when things opened up again, everybody, uh, you, you know, you've been talking to filmmakers, you know that these are not just anybody. They are people who are highly driven, extremely committed and very passionate about what they do. And they are creative to their core. So for them, um, reinventing and uh, reorganizing is, uh, is, is what they do best. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's what I saw happening around. Everybody wanted to reinvent and reorganize and, and uh, you know, rebudget the whole way that they work. You know, the employability also increased, isn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, the, uh, the need for trained professionals across uh, the different uh, platforms in the entertainment sector also opened up. In turn, did you observe more number of uh, younger students wanting to get trained formally? There's still a lot of um, resistance mm -hmm. to film schools. I think uh, the uh, we're still in the same space where engineering and medicine is like the first choice. But if you don't get in there, maybe um, as a third choice, you may uh, approach cinema. But... Um, uh, our uh, graduates are all working. I mean, they have uh, they have employment in most of the OTT platforms across India. They're working, mm, but they all dream of making a film, whether it's for an OTT release or a theatrical release. That's like the that's like the Olympics. Okay. Um, everybody wants to go and you know make a feature. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they're doing wonderful work. Uh, some of the features are ready to release. You'll be seeing them soon. And uh, wherever you see them, you know our social media will be posting about them. Um, uh, do they, does the OTT make a difference to our admissions? I would say that um, if you understand that space, say for, for anyone creating content, anyone... Uh, first generation creating content or journalism or mass comm or advertising, they understand yeah. uh, industry growth. So during the pandemic, uh, after the first shock, 2022-2023, uh, uh, media entertainment grew 33%, mm -hmm. which means jobs are bursting all over. But jobs are not for anyone who doesn't have the proper training. True. And most of the media entertainment companies are now being taken over by the corporate sector. The corporate sector is very particular about where you've trained. Do you know your craft? Do you know? Do you have a mentor? Do you have a backing behind you? Do you have a, a crew of your own? Are you able to do it within a budget? The, you know, all the... Uh, checklist is there. It's it's not uh, so easy anymore. Mm -hmm. So yes, our graduates have a lot of opportunity in the OTT sector, um, but parents need to get the confidence that this thirty three percent growth is real and um, have the confidence to send their uh, the young people to mm -hmm. um, to fill the gap. Sometime in 2015, I remember you telling me that uh, parents are still very hesitant to send their children to a film school. It was still a very niche area. That hasn't changed much? Not much. Second 
second generation, third generation, anyone in the creative field, their kids come here okay. uh, and really take like fish to water. Mm -hmm. But um, the other sectors are still toying. I, I think there is a certain fear about the unpredictable nature of it. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that it's an extremely satisfying career. Okay. okay. Yeah. You know, at an event, I remember, uh, you know, which you were speaking in about a year or two ago, and you mentioned that every year there are changes brought into the curriculum because the industry is also changing and evolving. Can you give us a few examples of the kind of changes that have been incorporated? The curriculum, we have a board of studies and we have a, uh, an academic council. Uh, our university, Jawaharlal Nehru Arts and Ar Architecture University, they also have a very distinguished advisory board who interact with our academic council when developing the curriculum. Um, but the key understanding is um, every year we, we have a review. The curriculum, we have a board of studies and we have a, uh, an academic council uh, our university, Jawaharlal Nehru Arts and Ar Architecture University, they also have a very distinguished advisory board who interact with our academic council when developing the curriculum. Um, but the key understanding is um, every year we, we have a review of what, what was taught, how it was taught and what was the outcome. Did the students actually learn it? Did they get confidence in what they um, uh, made? Uh, did they get enough practice? Did they get enough feedback? Did, were they able to adapt um, to the expectations and deliver the expectations of, of the community? And when we have a very honest discussion and review about it, we find that there are things which hit the mark mm -hmm. and did wonders. There are things which didn't hit the mark. Like, for example, one understanding of uh, the documentary as a, as a module mm -hmm. was that um, many of them had not been exposed to filming outside. Okay. So they didn't know how to, they knew how to, how to film in a very controlled and protected environment like this. But the minute you go outside, every plan goes to pieces, right? Nothing goes according to plan. And so taking them or sending them outside to shoot um, then became part of the curriculum, right? So that they must go into the real world. But the documentary as a subject does not change, yeah. but the way in which they um, are to exposed adapt. to it, yes. Okay. Secondly, uh, we also said that uh, many of them are not exposed to rural India or all the issues the grassroots face. Uh, they lead protected lives in the city with all the comforts. So maybe sending them to witness that firsthand will make them... Uh, grow and why will give them that wisdom mm -hmm. uh, to appreciate all that they have and to also be more empathetic with the, the world around them. And so that became a mode of um, then making them documentary filmmakers. And so okay. when you empathize with the story, you and you have to research it on the field, um, the, the learning becomes driven. Mm -hmm more than just being told what to do in a classroom. Right. So it's been about a decade, isn't it, that you took over as uh, the director of the film about school? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> in these eight years, uh, have you ever wondered, even fleetingly, in hindsight, had you received formal training in acting, how your journey and your approach to your craft would have been? I mean, in 1980s, the only avenues which were available, yeah. I think, is National School of Drama and the Film Institute of Pune. It was limited. Yes, yes. In hindsight, I had a lot of training, but it was in the classical dance. Classical arts. dance. Um, uh, I have this innate uh, character in me that... Um, my brain doesn't work in silos. Um, so whatever I learn, I immediately adapt it to whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, the training of a dancer was about practice, was about uh, a self-discipline, a self-motivation, an ability to go in 
find the most complex challenge before you and then break it down into doable steps and then practice it till you get a grip on it and then go give your best and then how to be as part of a dance troupe, how to uh, travel the world, deliver, deliver, deliver on cue, on time. For me, besides dance as a dance form, all this was part of the training and I took it and I adapted it exactly for the new um, opportunity that I got and it fitted beautifully. It was like Cinderella's slipper. Okay. Yeah, it, it just did that. Of course, um, from an expression point of view, an artistic expression point of view, dance expression is far more exaggerated. You'll yeah. notice that I use my, my hands a lot mm -hmm. because um, when I use my hand, my, there is a presence of mind. You know, Bharat is not yeah, yeah, so tato manaha. So when you when you use your uh, when you use your hand, your your you know you'll keep your mind exactly mm -hmm. present and you'll be um, very conscious about what what is being said or what is being done. It's a kind of a an innate uh, uh, behavior or mannerism that I have from being a dancer. Mm -hmm. Had I benefited from dance school, I mean from acting school, I think at that time each director was my acting teacher. Okay. Um, when I signed up uh, um, for my first film, my first director, director Rajendran, so he said, "Don't worry, I will teach you." And uh, he, you know, he assured me that he will teach me, and it's true. He taught me because I think for the first ten days or so. All I could hear was this roar of anxiety with the blood flowing through my head because I had I had faced a huge uh, stage, uh, a sea of people in front of me, but I'd never uh, faced this little machine that was worrying, okay. that was making this sound and all these lights and all these people just standing around watching me so close <laughs> and that anxiety. So... Uh, director T. Rajendran helped me get over that anxiety right up to Pushpak. Mm -hmm. I think um, all my directors helped me and uh, those were my acting school days. Mm -hmm. So um, I missed out on one, but I gained on the other. Today, would okay. a director prefer a student from an acting school? I'm sure they would, but more than the training, I think they would like, they would appreciate a student who had that discipline of practice, of um, being able to be on cue and uh, being willing to learn and adapt, um, not to come with too much baggage to the table. Okay. You know, I think those are the qualities they look in a newcomer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, you mentioned Pushpak. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a certain phase, uh, you know, um, Pushpak, uh, Maapillai, Rajnikanth Maapillai, even before that, Velai Karan, Vedam Pudithu, mm -hmm. then of course, Agni Nakshatram, mm -hmm. um, then Shiva. Was that a phase that you enjoyed the most because you looked uh, as though you were like really enjoying that in front of the camera? I think by Pushpak, by the time Pushpak was done, I'd gotten over my camera fear. Okay. Because otherwise, you know, um, the minute the camera would switch on, there would be this roar like an, like the ocean waves. Mm -hmm. uh, fear would paralyze me and um, it took some time to get over that. Uh, and I think um, perhaps uh, any young person coming to it, this is where the practice helps. Mm -hmm. So you do project after project after project till you become comfortable in your own skin and you know what um, you will look like. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, in those days, we didn't have a monitor. Yeah, yeah. You would have to wait three months sometimes to see what was coming. And uh, very often, I didn't even see the film till I saw it in the theater. Mm -hmm. So I had no clue what I was doing facing <laughs> the camera. Uh, today, you have a monitor. You can immediately gauge and improve. So maybe the fear doesn't have to be there. But I think by the time, you're right, by the time I reached Pushpak, I had gotten over my fear 
and uh, that definitely shows on on the screen when you're comfortable with your craft thank you ma'am thank you for the mm -hmm. wonderful conversation and we hope to see you back on screen every now and then <laughs> thank you sangeeta all the very best for your your work as well i know thank things you. are transforming everywhere these are exciting times yes uh, one of the new things we're even going to introduce is the working with ai Oh. because that's a big part of the future and working with technologies like um, mm -hmm. atmos sound and uh, the virtual production the virtual production stage. yes um with the uh, climate change making things more and more challenging budgets uh to shoot difficult uh, environments budgets are colossal bringing those budgets down to very affordable um ways where you can tell a story in its simplest purest form but in in a very controlled budget in a controlled environment these are big things that we have mm -hmm. uh in la in the pipeline and uh, these are exciting times i wish you all the very best thank you thank and you